uh, understands uh, protections and is always there for his O line. And you know, when he's running the ball, they're always there for him. So, um, yeah, he just he's a complete back. What do you think? Uh, I guess it would mean for him as someone who grew up watching this team to maybe win most outstanding player tonight for uh, the team he grew up watching. Yeah, certainly. I, I think he'd be excited about it. Um, He's also got to the point, I think, in his career where he understands that um, he's going to experience some joy for his O-line and for the receivers that block downfield and, you know, for everybody on the team, right? Um, he's, he's, he's certainly got to that point, right? But don't kid yourself, you know, you, you, win, you, you win an award like that and it's, it's a moment you should be proud of. I, I also know that, you know, Come later tonight, he's going to be focused on one thing and one thing only. You take some extra pride in a you know homegrown Canadian being up for the big award against uh, Do all I? Americans. Yeah, I think it's neat. Yeah, sure, but I don't know if it's if it's extra pride. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you look at our roster, we got a lot of guys that can play most positions. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Brady was saying that uh, it's probably a good thing he didn't win awards his first year or two because uh, might have gone to his head. <laughs> How do you, yeah, a lot of guys, not just Brady. Yeah. A lot of guys, right? So um, it's certainly uh, young guys that come in in, in skill positions. You know, they they know they can compete right away, and they. They're hungry and they want the ball and they want success. Mm -hmm. um, once again, I think um, Brady's he's wired right, um, not just on the football field, but understanding team. And last one for me. I know we've asked you this before uh, about honoring teammates. I, it almost gets a magnification here at the Grey Cup. Everything does. Uh, those who can't play have been out all season. Just tell me what uh, maybe a player can get just from even seeing them there yeah once again if you if you're if you if you have that ability to notice which a lot of our guys do then you you can see the struggle that the that the injured guys go through um, and you're aware of it and I do think it can provide a little extra you know when you look around the room and you trying to see who you're playing for, you know, um, and you, your eyes cross a guy who's been out for a while and, mm -hmm. you know, how much they're hurting. They want to be doing it with you. Yeah, it's got to it's got to provide a little extra oomph. Yeah, someone was even describing it as you don't want to have wasted the effort they put in. Mm. That ring, yeah, ring and the effort they're putting in. And still. Like our, our guys are doing a great job of, of being there for – for the guys that are going to be suited up and giving them everything they got in the meeting rooms and, you know, figuring out what they need on a daily basis in this kind of environment. Mike, obviously football is such an incredible team game, but quarterback, the best. quarterback does have such an outsized impact or can have such an outsized impact mm -hmm. on, on how, how the game is played. When you look at Zach, he's become one of those quarterbacks who's, who's kind of been in the league a long time, who's put in a lot of time. And that's always been one of the most valuable things about the league uh, in the context of that team game. Um, where do you kind of see him uh, when you, like you've seen a lot of quarterbacks in this league, a lot of the lifers, right, going back a long ways. Um, when you look at him and you look at kind of the guys you've seen, how do you, uh, where, where does he kind of place for you? Yeah. That's what you were getting to, eh, is a ranking? <laughs> Not a ranking, but just like yeah. what about him is, um, has kind of allowed him to do that and, and be, be one of those Well, it's just if you're around him for any length of time, you understand how competitive he is and how much he just, um, you know, you call him a football junkie, right, or gym rat, you know. They're, they're always playing rat ball in the afternoon, right, that, that he would be the guy that wouldn't leave the gym. It just so happens he plays football. So he's always doing something. Um, with that, trying to get better all the time, trying to understand his opponents, trying to understand his own team. He's always working at it. Um, and he has this, you know, great character just to be around the locker room and be an average guy that you can hang out with. Um, 
Yeah, he's got he's got all of it. Where does he fit? I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't really spend a lot of time thinking like that. I just know that you'd always want him on your team. Yeah. Mike, how you doing, by the way? Not bad, Ed. Okay. Uh, last full practice of the year. What's your sense or what kind of read are you getting from your squad? Yeah, they probably want to still be out there. You know, it's one of those things. They they seem to have fun doing it. They enjoy being out there together and working. And um, today was no different, which is nice to see. But, you know, I bet you if you just let the plays keep going and going and going, they might not even noticed. Will, I guess the families, a lot of the families come in tomorrow. Willie was saying his advice to players was to kind of soak that up, but then you have to tell your family we're here to work. And Yeah, it's always been that way. It's, I think that's been the message on every team that ends up in this situation. Um, and, and it was it was framed in a, a, a nice way. Uh, you know, they, they really want you to be successful, but you you really need to tell them what that means to you and 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 what you need <laughs> to be successful in the next bunch of days, right? Like you need your rest, you need to study, you need to be around your teammates, you need to be communicating with them and hanging with them and getting that last little bit of time with your with your guys too. I mean, everybody's going to go hug their family and love on their kids and do all that. But it's really a communication piece, you know. Once again, they want you to be successful, and you need to explain to them what that's going to look like over the next couple of days. One more for me. You, you guys have said, especially you, the last little while, that, that this means getting to this game means you get one more week to spend mm -hmm. together. There does seem to be a great deal of appreciation for that. Are you getting that sense from them too? Absolutely. How does it show itself to you? Yeah, yeah. It's it's good. You know, some of the stuff I just like to keep in house, right? But they're uh, they're they're doing a good job of making the most of their time. This feels like the 99th Grey Cup in a row that the Bombers have been in the Grey Cup. That would be fun, wouldn't it? It, 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 it would be, I'm sure. Uh, just from the start of the streak to now, what what has gone into building that culture of winning in Winnipeg? Uh, it's pretty simple. I think you just bring in the right guys. You know, very talented group for the last pile of years. And um, guys that are excellent leaders and care so much and great teammates. Uh, you fill a room with guys like that. And it, once again, I don't want to. I don't want to sound like this, but it's you sort of let them go. <laughs> you know, they run it. It's their team. And as long as you keep, you know, keep the room full of good guys that can play football, but good guys, then it's going to be like that. Do you have a word to describe that culture? No. I think, once again, that word culture, everybody's trying to find it. You never get it. Like, you've never arrived with it. You never achieve it. You just have to keep working on it. Last one for me, just um, Winnipeg has been climbing the, the charts in attendance. Is it a symbiotic relationship or what came first, chicken or the egg, the success or the fans? Oh, I think the fans have always been there, whether they filled the place every single year, every game every single year. I guess that's probably not the case. But uh, the city, the province, I mean, and our fans travel well too. I mean, you go... Every place we go, there's going to be Bomber fans there. But it's, uh, yeah, I think the fans were around a lot longer than than our latest little bit here. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Good, Claire. Um, I was speaking with Kenny Lawler just about the games he missed earlier this season with his injury and how when it, he was coming back, he was nervous, kind of doubting himself mentally. How have you seen him? Like we saw in the West Final how he exploded. But... How did those weeks of adversity maybe translate to him appreciating big moments like this a little more? Yeah, I think Kenny shortchanged himself a little bit. You know, um, I think over the last bunch of years, he's really appreciated uh, his time on the field and um, certainly, you know, 
has gratitude towards everybody around him, his teammates especially, and um, what they mean to him, um, you know, as he continues to grow and get better. I mean, he's he's a phenomenal athlete, and I just, uh, you know, on the personal side, I, I think he's he's been excellent for us. But I do think he's... He's 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 been there for a while, right? I think he appreciates it and has for a while. Another thing, when I look at your team and compare it to the teams I saw in the last two years, like I'll just use an example. Willie Jefferson had the GoPro the last two years, and he seems, you know, he doesn't have it this year, and he said, I wanted it to be more like a business trip. Mm -hmm. Was it a message that you sent to the team to dial it in a, more, a bit more this week, or is that something that internally happened itself? Yeah, I think that that was all they're doing like I said we got a, a great room full of leaders that um, have been on both sides and know what it takes hey coach um, I talked to some of the guys and I was joking with them I was saying hey it seems like you guys just get to play full seasons every year while some other teams get to watch you guys on TV at this time of year um, but they were mentioning that you know every year is different every great cup is different it has its own story what would you say would be the theme of this year and this great cup in particular? Ooh. Yeah, I don't know. That's a great question for them probably. I, we don't – we've never really started any year with a theme. I know that's commonplace. I, I played on a bunch of teams where you open that first page and there's a whole – you know, there's a usually a picture and a statement or a quote or something like that. And uh, we've, we've never really done that. But uh, they managed to – create those on their own, I'm sure. I don't know what it is inside the locker room, you know. Mike, you've talked positively a lot about your your athletic, your training staff. You went through a lot of injuries this year. You go through injuries every year. What is it about that group um, that has your utmost confidence in? in uh, Our training staff? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's easy. They're... They they care so much about the guys. They put all their energy into the players and the health, you know, and their health. Um, the players know they care very quickly. New guys come into our our building and they learn very quickly to trust our staff. Uh, they're innovative. They're creative. Uh, they're constantly learning. Um, you know, Al runs uh, a, a very I don't say tight ship, but he you know you'll walk in there and they'll be. Um, you know, they'll be in a, in a learning mode. You know, they'll be doing something that they're all sort of learning something new or they'll be, you'll go in and the training staff will all be working out together. Um, they just seem to have it dialed in. And Al, once again, Al is um, very focused on making sure that, that these players are available. Um, and he also will not ever you know put a player out before he's ready so when al says this guy's ready he's ready um and i think that that bond that trust that is formed um with the players is uh something that every training staff every trainer head trainer is trying to achieve and al's done that for years once again when new guys come in it's very quickly they figure it out that they're in a very good spot You've obviously benefited from continuity during this, you know, run here. This off season felt a bit different. It seemed like, you know, after you lost in in uh, in twenty three, that it, or sorry, in twenty two, that guys would come back and kind of, you know, a bit of a redemption thing. It seemed like the vibe in this off season, whether it was you know paying increase, you know, Dalton Schoen getting a massive raise, Brady getting a massive raise, a little less of giving back to the organization. It would have left you with a roster with, I think, a bit more question marks maybe still confidence but question marks i'm wondering if there was when you looked at that roster on day one if you could identify an area where you're just like this needs to work out i know i think it's going to work out but maybe you weren't sure as in previous seasons no i, I you know it doesn't happen at the start of training camp like it starts the minute the off season starts you start looking at the roster and and having a good under trying to feel, get a good understanding of what's going to happen with your players. Um, we've always had the mindset that we want to try and sign all our guys first. Um, and as you said, I, and I don't know the numbers honestly, but as you said, the, 
we lost more guys this year than other years possibly. Um, I don't, I've never written it down and looked at that to compare it. Um, but I know everybody involved is working hard to keep our guys and they're also working hard to figure out what's next if somebody decides to go somewhere else. Um, and we have no problem with that. I think uh, Ted, Danny, Cyril, Kyle, they've all, you know, they put in a ton of work to make sure um, there's going to be a lot of competition at camp and the next guy is going to be available for us. That's it. Thanks, Coach. Yep, thank you. Thanks, everybody.